Okay, to this day, just 15 December 2014, this is Zulfikar Snyder, and I'm going to conduct your speaking test. Uh, today's test uh, number is 201413. First of all, to help you feel comfortable, I'd like to ask you some familiar questions. Can you first tell me your full official name? My full official name is Saida Adiba Arif, as it appears in my passport and other official documents. Uh, what name do you want me to call you? I prefer being called Adiba. Okay, Ms. Adiba. Where are you from? I am from Chittagong, Bangladesh, and I live in a small neighborhood. It's a city area. It's called Kulshi. Right. It's like about five minutes away right from here. Okay. Are you a student or you're doing a job? I am a student, but I'm also doing a part-time job. Okay. What is the job about? I teach at a coaching center. Like I teach kids from grade six to seven. Right. Where is that located? It's located in Muratpur. It's about, uh, if you go south, it's about, if you take a shortcut, it's going to be about 15 minutes from here. Right. Why did you choose uh, this teaching job? I think personally teaching is a very good job because it's not just helping the student, it's also helping yourself. When you're teaching students, you're covering, you're redoing your basics again. Like I said, I'm teaching juniors. So <clears throat> when I'm doing that, uh, I'm actually, I discovered that a lot of things that maybe I was a kid and I was too unsure about that back then, but now since I've studied elaborately about it, it's much easier for me. Also, well, we can't forget the most obvious reason of choosing this profession is actually helping the students. I think that I connect to the students and when I see their eyes spark when they know something, it actually gives me tremendous joy. Right. Do you think you will ever change this job? It is just a part-time job, yes, I will change it. Okay. Let's talk about your school days. What were the good parts and bad parts about your school days? The good parts about the school days is indisputably my friends. We have a lot of moments together. We have huge days and tiring days that we spend together and we went on different programs. Like my school would take us to different competitions outside the city and we had to live there together for five, six days. I went to basket basketball tournaments and debate competitions with them and those were one of the highlights of um, my school life. And I really can't believe I'm going to say this, but the teachers were also a very fun part of my uh, educational school life. Good. What was your favorite subject at school? My favorite subject is and was in school physics, it was always physics. What? I think I was particularly good at physics all my life and I like it. I like that in physics you can actually have two, you can go two ways. There are theoretical applications and practical applications and I am particularly interested in the practical applications which is why I always excel in the practical field and I think that physics can actually help you know a lot of things that you can't with other subjects particularly. So. Okay. How did your school teach sports? My school had a coach for sports and we had free periods uh, almost like two days a week and the coach would call us all in and we would we would get to choose those sports that we wanted to perform. Like there were different team sports and individual sports. So for the team sports, uh, there would be selection of the students based on their well uh, skills in physics and then they would bring it, they would make a team and we would perform like every other day. And for my school particularly, the school team would have to arrive about half an hour before the school schedule so we could do some warming up and some practice almost on a daily basis. How would you improve the school that you went to? I would improve the school that I went to by establishing more clubs and by having an authority to do it. Well, mostly in my school, the clubs that we had, it was a student-based club, and even though it did promote student leadership, but there were sometimes a lot of complications due to no, well, a superior figure being there involved, which was mismanagement or authority disobedience and things like that. So I think the club need a senior teacher to monitor it. Good. Let's talk about readers. What kinds of things are rivers used for in your country? 
My country, which is a riverine country, and it has a lot of rivers, it almost crisscrosses the entire map. Rivers have a lot of uses, actually, especially uh, for transport. We use boats uh, and small um, transport uh, vehicles in the countryside, and it's actually used, since my country is an agricultural country, so um, not most of the agricultural products and produce they are transported through boats from one village to another and ultimately the chain gets together to go to the towns. And other things that rivers are used for our entertainment, especially when tourists come, they pay for the river rides and in that way we are actually getting some foreign currency in our income. Right. Okay. Are there any pollution problems with rivers in your country? There are plenty of pollution problems in my country when it comes to rivers, especially because the rivers are usually free access rivers and uh, anyone can access it when they want to. We see that a lot of villagers who are living adjacent to the rivers, they are polluting it, they're washing their clothes in it, they are bathing their animals in it, so basically dirt is getting accumulated in the rivers. So yes, a lot of pollution is occurring in the rivers. Okay. What kind of problems do people face if they live near a big river? Like I said before, there are pollutions in the rivers, so most problematic uh, issue that uh, people live when they uh, face when they're living beside river is the pollution. Like there's air pollution and of course water pollution when it comes to river, and they're intaking those waters directly or indirectly, and that's giving to a lot of chronic diseases, and it's giving rise to, say, diarrhea and dysentery and other things, and this especially happens in the villages because they're not very careful. Okay, now I'm going to give you a card. On the card, you'll find the topic and you will also find some guiding questions. Based on that, you have to prepare a talk for one minute and you have one minute time to take notes. The topic is to describe your favorite restaurant. Remember, you have to talk between one and two minutes, so don't worry, I'll stop you in the middle. Here's the topic, and you have the papers. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of restaurants in Bangladesh, and depending on customers and uh, well, uh, their perspectives, there are different kind of cuisines that they serve. One restaurant that I came across, which is by far my favorite restaurant, is Lo Sal. It's in Dhaka, it's situated in Gulshan. I had to do a course in Dhaka for three months. It was about French language and I went in there and at the end of my course they treated us and they took us to this restaurant. As the name suggests, Lo Sol, it is a French restaurant. And they serve, as the name suggests, French food. And in fact it's one of the rarest restaurants in the country that serves authentic French food. And there you will get everything starting from madeleines to croissants to tarts to bagels to every French food that you can ever ask for. And one good thing about that restaurant is that they actually take customer feedback. So when I tell them I want to taste this French food, they actually give take that in consideration. Say if I come later, they ask me and they recognize me and they ask me, hey, I got this you know, like dish ready, do you want to taste it? And as the name suggests, it's not actually as big a restaurant like it seems. It's a small restaurant. You can actually call it like a really small local business restaurant, but the food is great. And <clears throat> one of the reasons that I like this restaurant so much is because French food is life. I don't know what other people think of it because they haven't tasted it yet, but this food reminds me of my trip in Paris. I can actually smell the streets of Paris in that restaurant, and <clears throat> I really like it. And the food is actually quite inspiring. I myself, well, I want a future in culinary business, especially French food. So I think it's quite an inspiring business and the small scale businesses can someday be converted to large scale successful world class Michelin star restaurants. So yes, I really like it. Okay. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to the section three, the two way discussion part. First of all, we would like to have a discussion on fast food. Is fast food popular in your country? Yes, fast food is really popular in my country, especially if you compare it to how popular it was a few years ago. It is increasing in popularity almost tremendously. Why? 
Maybe because people are very busy nowadays, and as the name suggests, fast food is actually fast. You go to a restaurant and you get it available really soon, and you don't have to invest extra hours at your place to actually make that food. And it is quite cheap. Fast food is actually cheaper than other restaurant food, and it takes much less time to prepare it. And people have a thing for bad things. <laughs> so yeah, junk food is a few to a lot of people. Why has fast food become so popular over the last 30 years? 30 years ago, I guess people were much less busy than they are right now, and women were less empowered than they are right now. So typically, women were just expected to get married, and they were expected to stay in the kitchen and cook all the food. But now, even my mom or my friend's moms, or most of the people, most of the ladies, they work that outside their homes too, so they don't have much time to invest on food, which is why their daughters or sons like us, we go outside for fast food because it's the faster way and I don't have to invest much time in the kitchen. Could you compare fast food with traditional meals? Yeah, fast food can be comparable to traditional meal, and that by that I mean that uh, there are many differences. Like fast food is fast, you go and it's prepared by other people in the restaurants and home food are prepared ourselves. Nutritive value wise, fast food is really bad for our health, but home food, you're regulating the amount of protein or carbs that you're investing in the food. And uh, fast food is actually quite unhealthy sometimes because depending on the restaurants that you're going to, sometimes there are inspections going on and we find out that they're cooking in a very uh, unhygienic place, which is not of very aesthetic value, and they're using steel oil or steel ingredients, but home food is fresh, and it is actually quite tasty in comparison to some fast food. So. How can we stop young people eating so much fast food? One of the reasons fast food is so popular is because it's really cheap. It's cheaper than other foods, and I think if you increase the price of fast food, young people will try and get ingredients from local stores and make it themselves. Or you could, uh, well, people could do um, introductory, say, a two-week course on um, cooking their own food at schools, and they could do it like once every year. They could bring other organizers to do it. And there are a lot of people out there who actually have the potential to cook, they just never discovered it. So I guess that could be very interesting and they would skip fast food to actually make their own food. Okay, let's talk about food problems. What are some of the problems that some countries have with food production? Labor is labor is one of the most important problems that some people have. Because it's a it's, it's a great like it's a developing country. There are developing countries and people are trying to get out of the agricultural sector and they're trying to contribute to the industrial sector. So there are very less people who are generally interested in growing the food. And other problems of, well, um, food production in my country, which is actually not a problem of production, it's actually a problem of the technical production. They use a lot of insecticides and pesticides, which is actually degrading the quality of the food. Especially in my country, one of the greatest problems in food is formalin the addition of formalin to keep it very fresh and lasting for long days, but it's actually very harmful for our health. So that is one of the major food problems. Could you suggest any ways to solve these problems? There are many ways to solve these problems. Some of them are in vogue, some of them are not yet in vogue, and some of them, even though they're enacted, are not being followed due to lack of proper well uh, implementation. So what we can do to solve these food problems <clears throat> is actually get better paid jobs for people who are actually um, doing uh, these agricultural things. Some governments or uh, countries are doing a uh, subsidy, but I think instead of doing that, if it's taken more smartly, if that profession is taken more smartly and you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily going to call a farmer for contributing in the agricultural field and you're giving respect for cultivating food, I think uh, we can improve the quality of food. Another thing, food inspection should be taken more seriously. The food police, like we like to call it, should not be, well, you know, um, very um, lagging in their work and they should actually take it seriously. They should not 
take bribe from the industries that are bribing them to give a you know green take on their food, even though it's bad for other people, that will actually get you know them to do. So one of the main things that is going to help get rid of this problem is conscience and better payment. All right. What could what other problem can predict, can you predict happening in terms of food in the next 50 years? In the next 50 years, I think organic food is going to be very much in vogue. And even though organic food is really good for your health, organic food is industrially done. It's called GGM. And these uh, general motorized foods are actually very expensive. They're so expensive that local students or international students are going to stay in different places. They cannot afford it. So they're going to have to go for the food that are not, uh, well, uh, those kind of foods because they're cheaper. But by that time, the priority will go to the organic food. So those departments will lag behind. Another thing is that with increasing population, uh, the food supply might not be enough. So I guess the, only the rich people will be allowed or, well, fortunate enough to go for food. And that might result in a lot of coming problems. Okay, could you compare methods of food production and distribution today with 10 or 50 years ago? Yeah, definitely. Uh, there are a lot of changes of food production. Uh, one of the main things that changes technology over like those uh, 20 years ago, like you mentioned, technology was not as advanced as they are now. If I take the example of uh, my country, we, right now, we use uh, water pumps and electric mows and other things that are led, that create less pressure on animals or humans than they did before. Like before, the only uh, source of energy that we would get uh, for, um, say, a sowing or land or uh, sowing seeds or doing the things were manual labor and animal. And uh, that, even though it would be as efficient, if not more efficient than what it is right now, it was very time consuming. And that resulted in less production. So I guess now production is increasing day by day. Thank you very much. Thank you.